Tell me who you look up to so I can get to know you, they say. Growing up, I did not listen to hip-hop only. Where I come from, English was not even a language people speak, but music was a language that did not need any translation. With that being said, how y'all doing? It's your boy, Kid Casino, and it's my channel, Make You Move, where you can just call me Dan, and I make beats. I make all kinds of music, but hip-hop is what it's all about for me. I've been watching other producers sampling their beats, like Hit Boy, for example, who produced for many artists, but I got to know him through his work with Nas. Together they made albums like King's Disease 1, 2, and 3 just in the last three years. What stood out to me was that Hit Boy can blend old and new sounds to create fresh sound. I like the idea of making two different beats a part of one track, so I made a sample-based boom-bap style beat and a trap beat in one session. So let me show you what happened. So my wife plays a lot of Ethiopian music, that's where she's from. I get to listen to a lot of old music from really amazing singers. It often sounds like a fusion of uh, bass guitar, drums, some kind of old synthesizer. So I heard a song by Theodros McConan. I pulled out my phone and shazammed it. And sure enough, it came up. I was like, okay, this is gonna be sampled by me. And so I used two samples out of this track. One of them is this. I hope I'm not gonna get copyrighted. It's a nice mellow melody, but in the background, there's some kind of fashion going on. It sounds like they're just warming up improv, so it's not even on beat. So that's what kind of threw me off, but that's what I mean by the live performance. They are on stage uh, or in the studio warming up. Later on, it, it evens up and everything is on rhythm, but this is the piece I wanted to use because it, it, it sounded so in the moment so interesting to me. That's the actual part that I wanted to use. And then when I downloaded the track, I listened to the whole thing again and again and again. Liked another part that I also used. That's the second one. Next, I opened an instance of Fruity Slicer, pitched it down by 100 cents and increased a little bit of attack. That's pretty much it. That's what it sounds like before the effects. Then I started applying my effects, turning it into a, a vintage sample, cutting the lows and cutting the highs. And then I boosted this band, that's what it sounds like now. Pretty much very muffled. Then I added OTT. Another instance of parametric EQ, cleaned up some resonant frequencies. Compressor by Analog Obsession. Uh, it makes it sound a little more clear, bringing that clarity back in a little bit while moving that unnecessary percussion more into the background, if that makes any sense. And then the last one, more EQ, getting rid of everything bassy uh, up until 273 hertz. Now this is what it sounds like after all of this was applied. And just to compare without it. I wasn't really able to clean it up completely, but it did some heavy lifting anyway. Give more attention to the melody as opposed to the unnecessary sounds that I didn't want to end up in the loop. All of the drums, including kick, two snares, two hats, and open hat came from the same pack by Stolen Drums. He's an amazing producer and beat maker. Um, I purchased these drums uh, quite, a, quite a while ago and I continue going back to them. Really high quality stuff. I quickly came up with a classical boom bap style drum pattern. Then for the bass pattern, I used Modo Bass 2. This is a free plugin and it's an amazing plugin. I normally use bass guitar plugins for my old school boom bap type beats. Bass pattern with no effects. And there's a second bass pattern 
that sounds a little bit different, I just use it in a different section of the beat. I applied solid state logic console based EQ style. It adds a little bit of coloring to your bass distortion with preset called bass beef. Then T-Rex classic equalizer, also preset, electric bass, vintage amp. So now with effects. Now I'm gonna play everything together, sample, bass line, and all of the drums. And uh, this is a different section of the beat where I use second version of the sample and second version of the bass. So the last thing I added to this beat was uh, the scratches, just to kind of spice it up and uh, make the transitions between the sections of the beat more pronounced. Scratching used to be a big part of hip hop uh, back in the days. Here's the example of how I used it. All right, second beat. So first of all, I wanted to make a smooth transition from one beat into another and so in the very last section of the boom bap beat I introduced a sign lead which is an element of the next beat <laughs> sign lead came from synth master player the preset name LD I believe it stands for lead gangsta wine don't be surprised gangsta's wine as well Without the effects. So as far as effects, I added fully chorus, pitch drift from Baby Audio and Valhalla Supermassive, only 33% mix. And now with effects. Plain and simple, very whiny. After that, I added an 808. I used this out knob and I make it really, really short. Lead and 808 together. All of the drums in this beat came from 808 Mafia Balenciaga Drum Kit 3. I wanted this kind of long trailing off type of snare, accent snare, kick, short and punchy. I had drums all together. Now drums with 808 and sign lead. I wanted to add some kind of texture too, so I went ahead and bound this texture. Next up is probably one of my favorite native FL plugins, Horns Staccato preset. These horns are adding a little bit of that bravado to the beat. Here's the pattern. Now with the rest of the elements. And just as I thought I was done, something told me I have to add bells. I opened another favorite FL Studio native plugin called Citrus. And this is a slept on preset called Dream Bell from the bell section, obviously. Here's the melody I came up with. Very dark, very kind of haunting melody. All of this together. And last, scratches also at the end of this beat.